Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So today I'd like to talk about why there are no negative reviews on Thomas and Stereo. Statistically speaking, it is impossible for me to hit jackpot every single time. Every single gear I bring home is fantastic. It is impossible. And yet, I've never made a negative review on my channel. So I'd like to tackle that and also at the same time I can talk about why some gears I don't talk about on my channel. For example, the Shed Vidar. Um, I was planning to make a review on it and then I decided not to. So I'll go over all this today with everyone. And uh, the reason why I use Shed Vidar is because I'm sure I'll catch your attention when I say that. So there are four uh, main talking points. Shed Vidar is good by the way. So don't worry guys, okay? So there are four main reasons why I don't do bad reviews or why I don't do reviews, period, on certain products. All right, so the first reason. Um, as a YouTuber, it's easy for me to select what I want to review, okay? So uh, behind the scene, uh, what you don't know is that Sean from Zero Fidelity is a very generous person. He reached out to me a while ago and told me, you know, if there's anything that I'd like to review, you know, that he has already reviewed, I can always reach out to him and he'll hook me up. And that's how, for example, I got this Polk Audio LSIM 707. Um, it's very simple with Sean. I just have to message him. Hey, Sean, you got a connection to Polk. A few minutes later, he comes back. All right, 707 on the way. So uh, it's hard to imagine eh? somebody with a baseball cam with, uh, you know, a, a simple camera with a simple channel. Actually, it has a lot, a lot of connection behind the scene. But yet, you don't see me asking for a lot of things on my channel. You know, when I look at his channel, of course, I see all the gears that he reviewed. And just like everyone, I'm drooling every time when I watch his video. Um, you know, I, I like to get all those gears too. But however, the problem is storage. If you look at my uh, extra room, just to store gear, I mean, that takes up a whole two rooms, not one, two. Because uh, I myself buy a lot of gear, right? So it, once you start adding in um, the review samples, the boxes and so forth, yeah, yeah you're, you're taking up a lot of space. So that's why I asked Sean for his help for sp only specific things uh, when it's very interesting. For example, recently he said the best sub $1,000 speaker that he reviewed, the triangle. You know what? Yeah, Sean, I need a pair of triangles. And it's coming soon to my place. So that's number one. I'm very selective what I want to review. So number two, I like watching movies with happy endings. So that's why I like to make videos where people are excited about at the end of the video, they want to go out to buy it. Sure, it's dangerous for your wallet, I admit. But, you know, I, I mean, do, do you really want to see a movie with a sad ending? I understand when somebody says, uh, but from an integrity point of view, you should talk about the good and the bad. Now, this is how I see it. Uh, if I have a conversation with you, Yes, I do. Okay. If I start a review on something, if I make a video on it, yes, I own you the good and the bad. But if I don't make a re uh, video on it, then no, I don't have to. Think about it. Like you don't see me talking about my Macintosh, uh, my Audio Research LS28, the Macintosh 452, and so forth. If I have to talk about every single gear that comes into my house, I mean, half of it will be high-end gears and half of it will be budget gears. And I've noticed that there's more interest in budget gear. I get more clicks. You know, recently I uploaded this video, Kef uh, Reference 5. Man, it took like a week before it hit 10,000 views. Usually with budget gear, it's like two, three days and I'm done. There's more interest in budget gear. And given the fact that I make maybe three, four videos a month, you know, I'm lazy. Why would I want to choose to make a video with a sad ending? It's like you watch for 10 minutes and at the end I say, oh, this thing sucks. Go home. I just wasted 10 minutes of your time. And number three, the reason why I don't make review on certain products, for example, the Shed Vidar, is because I got nothing to compare it to. Now, when I made the review on the Sprout 100, the IOTA VX and so forth, I had something to compare it to. I went out to get seven integrated amps just to get an idea how uh, integrated amps in this price range perform. So that makes sense. Now, once I got the Vidar, that's when I realized, oh, I don't know 
how to evaluate it because when I put it against my uh, Moon W5.3, there was a gap. And it's normal, right? This is four or five grand and that one is 700 bucks US. So it's normal, there is a gap. Now, there are two things. One, sometimes I would talk about it even though I got nothing to compare to. Usually these are products that just caught my attention. There's something about it I like. And no, I can't really explain it, but it just excites me. If it doesn't do that, then um, I usually compare it to other products in its price range. What is good? How do you define good? If the Vi Vidar is the best power amp you ever heard in your life, yeah, for sure you're going to say it's good. But given the fact that I have a lot of experience with different power amps, I probably own 20, 30 of them and uh, many way above the price of the Vidar. So it's difficult for me to evaluate if the Vidar is good or not. Now, so what I did, I was like, okay, so I have the IOTA PA3, which I can compare to. Then I went out to get myself an Atcom uh, vintage power amp so I can have an idea how it compares to the new sound with the old sound, if it's if there's such a thing. And then I was going to get a few more power amp in its price range to compare. So that way I can be confident to tell you the Vidar is good or it's great. Because today, good is not good enough anymore. It's so easy to get gears that sound good. We're looking for excellence right now. And then I realized, okay, I am not going to go get like three and four more power amps because my house will be full of boxes again. So I gave up on the idea and then I just returned the Vida to my friend. So that's um, a scenario where I decided not to make a review on something because I have nothing to compare to and I don't feel confident in my assessment if I say it is good or it is fantastic. And finally, the most important reason why I don't make bad reviews is because I can be wrong. One thing I learned after playing with a lot, a lot of gear is that sometimes the setup is the problem. It's not necessarily the gear and knowledge is very important too. I know we have a tendency as humans to think that we know we have all the answers, but what I've learned over the years playing with a lot of gear, there's such a thing called synergy, which is very important. And also uh, speaker placement, little tips and tricks here and there. It can make it or break it in the system. Room, very important too. So let's take for example, recently I got my hands on a pair of Zoo 30 Weekend. And um, I set it up like where I usually will put my speakers and so forth, uh, pair with whatever gear. And then I started listening to it. I was like, hmm, okay. Maybe that's why people, um, some people like Zoo and some people don't like Zoo. Okay, I said, so maybe this is the Zoo sound I'm hearing. It's okay. And then, so what I did, I invite all my friends over. A few of them dropped by and none of them like that speaker, the Zoo 30 uh, Weekend. If I made a review there, given the fact I did invite all my friends over to test it, and I can guarantee you it is an honest review. 100% honest, and it would have been not a, such a good review. So what happens that after they left, I'm, I'm like, okay, there must be a reason why every one of them didn't like it. I even took out the manual for Zoo Audio uh, 30 Weekend, like the speaker manual, and started uh, experimenting, start going, okay, how can I make it sound better and so forth. So fast forward a few weeks later, I invite uh, them back. So the people who came back, guess what? Some of them are like, oh my goodness, this sounds freaking amazing. You know, this is really good. Uh, even, well, sadly, there's maybe one person I cannot win back. And uh, he actually owns uh, Zoo speakers himself too. And uh, it's just that he's, I guess maybe he, he just doesn't like Zoo speaker. Well, he bought one and he tried it. But uh, everybody else, I was able to change their mind. People who didn't like it the first time and uh, they liked it the second time. Well, one person he was like, I think there's still more potential to these speakers. But regardless, the point is that I was able to win everybody else back as that one person. That I fail. But what a difference, right? Because I spent time trying to figure out how to get this speaker sound really good. And at the Toronto Audio Show, when I heard those Zoo 30 Weekend, I was blown away. And so here we go from uh, everybody not liking it and me getting blown away at the Toronto Audio Show, there is such a big gap. And that's why I always remind myself, 
if I can't get a gear to sound good at my place, it could be my knowledge, it could be a lot of things. And I, I should be humble enough to go like, you know, maybe I don't know everything there is to know about audio. And then uh, I'll revisit I'll revisit it in a few years or maybe later on. And that's why you see me sometimes buying uh, gear, selling it and rebuying again. For example, these uh, Sonos Faber toy. I actually had this uh, a while ago, a few years ago. I thought it was meh, sold it. And now when I got it back, guess what? Fantastic speakers. What change? Obviously, taste change, knowledge change, setup change. If I made that same video uh, a few years ago, it would be an honest video, guarantee you. But it will not be the same video because of my knowledge, setting up. Oh, okay, I see. So, uh, you know, everything is a relationship. If I have speakers that are quite strong in bass, I won't position it at the same position as a speaker that is uh, normal in bass because that affects imaging, that affects a lot of things. So when I start realizing this, you know, then I start playing with uh, positionings. Um, sometimes I can't get it to sound good. I'll bring it over to my friend's place and I learn, I learn that way. But I still don't know everything. And if that's the case, if I come across a gear that I don't like, that I can't get to sound good, then it's best I don't make a video because maybe it's just me. Because the second I make a bad video on it, it is irreversible damage. People who were going to buy that equipment will not buy it. It's irreversible because it's too late to buy something else. And all because a big chance I just didn't have the knowledge to get that gear sounding good or that gear does not have good synergy with my uh, gear or my room is not right for that gear. So that's why it's a conscious decision from my side not to make uh, a video on gears that I can't get them to sound good at my place. There are manufacturers who have sent me gears that I can't get it to sound good or I just don't understand it because I got nothing to compare to. Uh, recently, I got some this speakers, one of those Sonos thing there, right? Those little small ones you connect with your phone. I'm listening to it. I'm like, okay, so what? What does this thing tell me? It's like, and I can't compare it to big speakers like this. So guess what? I send it back. I'm like, I don't understand it. All right, so let's wrap it up. So what is the takeaway? If you think about it, when you watch a review, you are gambling. You're gambling on the fact that your taste and my taste are the same thing. So when I like something, the chances of you liking something is significantly higher. So therefore, you buy it based on my recommendation. But it's still a gamble. That is why even though I recommend the Elac 6.2, not everybody who brought it home liked it. So if that's the case, then what's the point of you watching reviews? Because your chances of liking it is probably 50-50 anyway. Even though if I highly recommend it or not recommend it, you and I might not have the same taste. The problem with my channel is not a review channel. Review channel is objective. They'll describe the sound of a product and it's up to you to decide is it for you or not. I don't do that, right? I just talk about the, what I find interesting about this set of speaker. And I don't usually go in depth how a, a certain product sounds. So that's why you, you cannot use my channel to to decide if something is for you or not. So then of course the question is, how do I use review? Because even if everyone said that this product is good, doesn't mean that I'll like it. So this is how I see it. If you see a lot of good review on a specific product, all it means is that it's worth your time. That's it. Doesn't mean that you'll like it, but it is worth your time and energy to go get it and listen at your place. No one is gonna be able to guarantee you that this is the right product for you. So I think I guess uh, that's about it. All right, guys, I'll see you next time. Bye.